And because of that, it's really nicely composed. You can change almost everything and replace it with, it with almost everything. So this is the composability part. Next part is like having those small chats. So now in this list, you can see this scroll bar on the right. Uh, if you are an Android developer and you are implementing a list in a recycler view, uh, recycler view has one of its property uh, the scroll bar. It, it, it works, but the problem is uh, it makes the recycler view even bigger. In Dragon, they solve it differently. The, the list view does not know anything about the, the scroll. Uh, scroll bar. We just need to wrap the list with the scroll bar and it works nicely. So the scroll bar is really small widget that you compose together with uh, list. Okay, but I'm here uh, saying plenty of words about having your uh, widget small. And that's really important because sometimes if you are a beginner in Flutter, you might decide like, okay, let me be build this big widget. Like, this, this is actually bigger than usual. So, yes. So try to avoid creating such a big widget. So in the beginning, it's even better to uh, have your widget too small than too big. So maybe like one line per widget is not, uh, it's a bit, too little, but like keep it to like five lines. Maybe you will learn in uh, you will learn in time how to have them proper size. So having those uh, things really small is really important. The problem comes when you are so doing uh, stateful widgets because they are the easiest to mess up. So like really pay attention to that. Okay, I was talking about how to make Flutter reusable. Let's have a concrete example. Mouse. So in my project, we were implementing a new dashboard. Uh, and for, according to product managers, it was a bit too complex for the user to understand. So for example, this piece. This is a performance type. Product wanted to uh, explain to the users how it works. And they decided to have this kind of tutorial page when the application starts. So something similar to this. So this is one of the first, like later designs. So there is this image and some text underneath. You might notice that instead of text, there are those gray boxes. Uh, the reason behind this is because uh, when they had a design with text, we told them, okay, designers, you know we support uh, like three different resolutions. So we need uh, like those DPI. So you need to provide us three images of this. Okay, do Next, we support 11 languages. So that's uh, three times 11, uh, 33. Okay, and they wanted four of those, like different screens with different explanation for stuff. That's uh, 132. And I uh, like use calculator to calculate it like before, so I, like, I know that's it. So I don't know with what kind of designers you work, but my, my designers, for some reason, said, said no. So they suggested, okay, let's blur up the text and keep it like this. So it would only have like, uh, how many? Three, uh, three uh, different images per uh, screen. Okay, but like, I, I said like, wait, wait a second. But in Flutter, so everything's a widget. Like even this image could have been a widget. So why should we reuse it? So what was the outcome? The suggestion by the designer was something like this, this icon or something, but we've created something like this. So we are using here an actual widget. So it solves a couple of problems. First of all, we have already those things translated and localized for the, uh, for the given device. Uh, next thing is it doesn't require additional assets because everything's there. Next thing is that uh, if we would decide to change something in those, in those styles, like change icon, font, or something, we wouldn't need to update the image because it's always up to date. It, it uses the same code. And the last thing is, like you, you probably like, can see it, 
it's animated. So like this tutorial, when you swipe through those pages, we animate this thing the same as we animate the real data. So designers like it. Um, OK. That's, this is about reusing widgets. But can we get a bit further? So let's talk about what is an application in Flutter. So if everything in Flutter is a widget, isn't an application a widget? Yes, it is. So it's basically a widget wrapped in this run up uh, method. And that gives us pretty nice things. For example, <coughs> so this is the uh, tutorial that I told you about. So with animations, right. translations, this is the exact, pa the exact page. So after I press cut it, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, okay, like later on I can show you. So this is actually a real application. Like it is supposed to contact backend, but I forgot to connect to internet. Okay, later on I, I can show you that. So you can see that it's pretty awesome. You can like uh, reuse your entire application. You can have even something like Let's say inception. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So you can have widget inside of widget inside of widget inside of widget and so on. And probably by this time you know that this presentation is written in Flutter. So uh, this is my uh, next point: writing your uh, presentation in Flutter. Probably you might be thinking like, why? Do I have enough time? Do I don't, like, don't, don't I have other hobby? Do I hate myself? Yes. <laughs> You're okay. uh, actually, no. Because like I uh, do a presentation every like second month to like present some meetup or something. And so I don't do them so often. And I uh, tend to forget how to do it. So I used to use the PowerPoint. Uh, later on, I used uh, Google Slides, but I forgot about every two months how to do proper animations, and they weren't so nice. But yeah, uh, what is that? So uh, at some point, there was a, a meetup that I attended, and I was presenting something uh, with uh, like one of these technologies. But uh, before me, there was a person, a guy, uh, presenting about Bash consoles. And he has written a presentation about Bash in Bash. And it had like really amazing animation. So after that, it was like, uh, like I was in like low place, like it was horrible. My, uh, my presentation looks worse than in Bash. So like I, I had to do something. And I was always envious of web developers, like oh, they can create a web, a web presentation in web. Like, how cool is it? Like, so yeah, no. Then I'm uh, creating uh, Flutter presentation in Flutter. And it's uh, also a really good idea because uh, uh, in my normal project, uh, we, we are focused more on the UX, like user experience for uh, the users. And designers don't have time to create those amazing animation contests for me. But uh, in the presentation, I can like, okay, try whatever I want uh, because it's really important to have nice animations here. I know this is not yet perfect, it's evolving, so at some point it, it will be amazing, the whole unicorns and everything. But I, thanks to that, I learned more and more about animation. And uh, even like I created some animation in this presentation, and I moved them to the, uh, my application, like parallax effects and so on. So it's really nice uh, to do presentation in Flutter. Uh, the, if they crash, then it's less so, but <laughs> like, uh, I still have how many presentations in Keynote crashing, so that, 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 that's not a problem. Hmm. Give me a <laughs> second. Oh, it's running. The parallax is running. Give me a second. Oh, yes, it keeps going in the background. <laughs> but the clicker stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> Recompile. Oh, okay, well, like, uh, like, okay, uh, sorry guys. <laughs> But now you can see, uh, sorry everybody, now you can see that an uh, actual Flutter application that I'm not lying. And maybe meanwhile we can quickly connect, uh, maybe not so quickly. Is that one? Done? 
The first one? Okay. And the passport? Who remembers the presentation as well. Okay, now a couple of clicks. By the way, it's a recursive widget. It, it can go to infinity. Like 100 levels still work, but it's hard to see. <laughs> okay, one more, one more. Yeah. Look, one more. look there. Okay. <laughs> Another way uh, how to how we can reuse Flutter is uh, its framework because like, its framework is created from layers. Probably if you have and uh, use Flutter enough, you probably saw one of the, the, the slides that like you can replace like widget layer, material layer, uh, like here, any layer. Or like replacing the engine layer that runs on iOS, Android and desktop, it's a bit harder, but uh, as you know with the project Hummingbird, also is possible. Uh, I made this presentation work uh, on web, but some transparencies didn't work, I would need to work more on fonts, so like you, you saw, like already it crashed once, I didn't want to change it too much. So like Flutter is really re reusable also on this level. Okay, now let's talk about one of my favorite topics because I'm really big fan of testing, TDD, because it my, makes my life simpler. <laughs> Nothing there to see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So first, like about unit tests. So like we know, like the confidence of unit tests is low because they are usually small. You need to have plenty of them. But the benefit is the maintenance cost is low because again, they are small, and the execution speed is pretty nice. Next, widget tests. Like those are my uh, favorites because uh, confidence is higher, like really high if you uh, can make it. The but maintenance cost is bigger because it covers planned uh, big uh, chunks of code, and, 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 yeah, they can be a hassle. And whenever you have a, a bug, or if something doesn't work, you need to print this entire widget string. Which, like, like, where is this widget? Like, uh, like a couple of kilobytes text. But, but, but you, can, you, uh, you are used to doing it. And execution speed is about 10 times slower than the test, but still, that's really nice. And now I wanted to talk about integration tests. So the Flutter driver tests that run on uh, actual uh, devices. So confidence is uh, highest because they are testing the real app. <coughs> Maintenance cost highest because so much thing that can break. And execution speed is the slowest. Can we? <laughs> oh, the hell. <laughs> My clicker stops. Working. Okay, not with the clicker. Okay, can we do something about this slowest thing? Yes, we can. Let me quickly. So, I don't like uh, too much Flutter Drive test because I need to spin up my uh, simulators and emulators to run them. And addition, uh, and uh, like nobody will here say that those uh, emulators and simulators are fast nor not, not consuming uh, too much memory. Like at some point, I can, this 
laptop has about 8 uh, gigabytes of RAM, and my emulator stack uh, take about uh, 3 gigabytes. So it's like only an emulator. So that's horrible. So wouldn't it be better to run our like driver test without uh, uh, emulators or simulators? And yes, it's possible. So like this is still an early phase of my like my experiments with Flutter driver on desktop because this is now normal uh, desktop application that runs it. You might think that, okay, but I'm not actually testing the entire application. So you're right, I'm not testing the Android nor the iOS part. But uh, since I've been using those tests, never I have had some situation where I would say, okay, like this uh, test on desktop didn't pick up something that the uh, emulator that uh, thing would pick up. So like for me, for now, they are really stable and much faster. Next thing about like uh, when I was developing those tests on desktop, I thought, hmm, okay, I, I'm running uh, my application as a desktop in test. Cannot I actually develop uh, my main application as a desktop application, skipping the uh, emulators and simulators? Yes, I can. And it w works really nice because my application is like half and half uh, native and flatter because it, it, it's four, four years old already. And compiling it for the first time takes six minutes. So anytime like some reloading doesn't uh, work or something, I need to stop it and execute again. It's so annoying. Like how to start and reload work later, works later, but uh, but still annoying. This thing like compiles within like uh, 15 seconds. So like I really love to use uh, desktop as my now main way of developing Flutter. And yeah, and my next step like it still doesn't work. What about CI? Because the biggest uh, pain point with uh, CI in Android, you need to spin up those uh, emulators somewhere. They take so much space. They are so flaky. Cannot we run this? as a uh, the Linux application on, uh, on Docker. I, it's, it, I think eventually we, we can. Already when I run it and make screenshot, I see like the stuff rendering, but still make the, but not full application. I, I hope I will, you know, we will uh, like a community and we can figure it out so we can have like those kind of tests with screenshots on Docker containers. That would be awesome. Okay, next thing. Clicker, not, not, not clicker. Uh, give me a second. Okay. Next thing, let's call, uh, talk about consoles. Uh, my question, anybody recognizes this one? <laughs> Louder. I think I heard it with answer. <laughs> yes, so this is a, a couple first, uh, like the first console from, okay, console output from Matrix. So why I want to talk about consoles? I want to talk about writing bash scripts. So like we are developer, we, we need to from time to time write bash scripts. But uh, we don't do it so often and we tend to forget how to do it. We don't know how to like, like filter lists that can and go in uh, uh, the bash scripts. And uh, another problem is I'm uh, also a Windows user. So I would need to uh, write uh, bash and batch uh, scripts. And bash script, I barely know how to do it. So why not, instead of using uh, writing those scripts, write an app, uh, like uh, Dart files and execute them. So for example, you saw that I executed one command in my uh, terminal before to run those tests. This, those were the normal Dart uh, file with main and uh, like uh, running some uh, commands attaching to uh, observatory so uh, like uh, this attachment and doing all the tests and I don't need to have additional logic about bash and bash to do, that, to do so so it's really convenient we have like translation scripts that are in Dart that we run uh, periodically that make screenshots uh, and a couple more so you might consider uh, you, uh, writing your scripts in that. It's really nice. Okay, and uh, now uh, one topic that uh, we start with Edgar. Okay. 
about uh, Jetpack Compose. Okay. Jetpack Compose was recently announced during Google I.O. And this is a framework for Android to write a declarative UI. So, and if you look at it, it's exactly like Flutter. Definitely those people uh, got some stuff from Flutter. During that time, I saw like uh, some tweets from my friends that are less optimistic, like, enthusiastic about Flutter. So they are the hardcore Android people. And they said, oh, you see, like now Android has <laughs> their own uh, declarative uh, programming framework. Like, are you scared Flutter now? Are you scared? I'm not. I'm super excited. And I really want uh, Jetpack Compose to succeed. Because for there are some Android developers that don't want to touch that. But they will be open to see uh, how uh, Jetpack Pack Compose works. And uh, play around. If they like it, we can say, like, by the way, and, uh, we have, like, this works way better on in Flutter. The hot, it has really nice hot restart reload. And, like, basically, everything is uh, better. So we can get more people thanks to it. And like, I, I really want people to learn declarative way of creating new, uh, UI. So it's really nice. And the, another thing is that is really great about Jetpack Compose, even those people, Android people that do not like Flutter, so that Flutter is bad, but still have written this thing, it means something. Like they are imitating us. And as we know, imitation is the sincerest form of Flutter. So like, I really would like uh, Jetpack Compose to succeed because like, it would mean that Flutter also succeeds. Okay, that was my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Learn something up, uh, like, from it. Like, I, I will send a GitHub uh, repo link to this thing. Of course, like, the, my application is not there, so <laughs> I, this is on different branch that you won't have access, but man, most of this will be there. Okay, any questions? Uh, did the desktop embedder allow for hot reload and hot restart? Yes. Oops, sweet. I need to double check now. Yeah, yeah. I'm here using uh, beta and uh, one of the versions of this uh, 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 Flutter uh, desktop embedder. But if you check out the latest uh, master both in the Flutter and this thing, it will work even better. So it works really nice. Caveats. There are no caveats. Everything works. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have shared preferences on that though? Like, uh, okay, like there are no the shared preferences here, but like Power, for example, uses a, a packet, a packet which is like SQL database. No SQL. No SQL. So it's package, it's not native. So it works only with the Dart, and you have a database only on at the package level. You don't need native. So on desktop it will work as well. So yeah, pretty nice. Are you using block for the production application? The block as an architecture? Yes. No. I, like, I started this and I, I used to work for a couple, like, one year with uh, Redux. Uh, Redux, no, uh, uh, React Chase and Redux. And Redux works for some, like, I really like Redux. It's not, uh, I'm not diplomatic about this. I, for example, I like Redux because, for example, analytics. Like uh, Redux works on events. If a uh, if, uh, product owner, okay, could you track uh, this button, please? It takes me exactly three lines of code to uh, uh, get any event to analyze. Also, when the application crashes, I get like uh, five last events that were fired, and I know exactly what the user was doing when the application got uh, read. So, like, I'm using Redux, but like all, like, all the current architecture patterns are really valid and it's depending on your case. Like, it's way less dogmatic than it's on Android. Any other questions? Oh, of course, later on you can uh, uh, catch me. I will be here around, around the beer fridge. It's not a question about this thing about running in a Docker and you done it, so it is possible. Yes. It works? Yes. And we had an automation running from Okay, like I will be talking to you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried that? Uh, yes. Uh, so I've tried even I tried to port this application. It, it, it works. 
but the fonts are not so good. For example, you see this background in no, background in background. Yeah. So I put uh, opacity to the image, like uh, 10 percent. But on web, it doesn't work for some reason. Like uh, it was co uh, completely like visible. There was uh, no uh, no transparency. But like uh, I wouldn't use yet uh, other web for uh, production. But it, I, I'm really excited. I, I will be changing my website whenever it's more or less stable. Okay, like if there are no other questions, you can grab me later and like thank you for listening. <laughs>